Now to kind of basically prove my first principle with the function of, and to get away from all this, to prove my function of the, of the first principle of covert hypnosis, and using its method of attention absorption through something like propaganda, is by simply giving you a quote by the man himself, Edward Bernays, who is basically one of the greatest propaganda kings of America who ever, no, he's not from America, but a lot of his work was influenced into, into the streams of American culture. And he's one of the, you know, the greatest propaganda kings who ever existed, basically. A man who reformed psychoanalysis for the sake of capitalism and money and propaganda. So something he writes is the following, and this is very short. PR must create news in order to appeal to the instincts and fundamental emotions of the public, end quote. So that's all he says. That's all that needs to be said. The fact that it has to appeal to the instincts, as he says, and emotions is the fundamental necessity of how covert hypnosis functions. You have to shock their system at first into giving up their complete attention to the news and to therefore bypass the critical self-reflective factor of the sovereign individual so that you can lead their emotions towards a desired outcome that you wish. This is how it works, basically. You have to penetrate their emotional system. And that's what he's basically just said there, it has to appeal to the instincts and emotions. So that simple short sentence from Benet's demonstrates the desire embedded in, in, uh, in news and propaganda to use your emotions for the sake of some kind of emotional hypnotic trance without you realizing it. And this is, this is the immunity that you need to develop. This is the immunity that all people need to develop against, not constantly going on about other things to have immunity, you need to develop propagandic immunity. And this, in some sense, is an unconscious process, this process of covert hypnosis. It's not really realized until someone realizes it themselves through some sort of process of maybe being or coming in, into contact with something that is revealing in a calm way when they're in a calm state of affairs. So they have to activate the instinct and activate the emotions so that they can develop this power over you. Which leads me into wanting to talk about now Noam Chomsky's work on the topic of manufacturing consent. Because what Chomsky in his heyday proposed back many, many years ago now was something called the propaganda model uh, on consent. That basically impartial mass media does not exist and never has. And we're going to be going over this model now. One thing he identifies in this model is that the American mass media has a social control mechanism built into it. Uh, he says it used to be anti-communism, it then became the war on terror, and now I would personally claim it to be slowly, maybe possibly in the future, to be slowly transforming into something else like the war on maybe medical terror, maybe, as an addition to what is. And I'm saying this because I was recently told by someone that they in America they reenacted Patriot Act in America. I'm not big into American politics. I don't really know much about it. But from what I know of the Patriot Act, I can say this, which probably means that they are going to maybe put in, uh, put, put it on a protective steroids, that they're going to be very invading, or they're going to make the Patriot Act very invading for the people in some sense, which is why I'm saying that they may include a new me uh, thing like medical terror or which maybe gives an excuse of doing something maybe like mass quarantines for people in rural areas, which is an actual course that you can actually, that they're actually training volunteers into, which is very frightening and is something <laughs> that you can look into. It's called the MGT 433 course on ruraltraining.org if you want to look, in, uh, look into that. But Chomsky also refers to other things like the profit orientation an advertiser orientation in mass media, which indicates that the mass media always functions as a profit-based operation and how, they also, uh, and how they also probably always work behind the advertisers' political biases, because if they didn't, they probably would not get the funding or the advertiser revenue that they need to be functioning as a news outlet. Another important point to make is also how, the, how he points out that large uh, bureaucracies uh, subsidize the mass media for the sake of efficient sourcing 
which means they have a lot of one-sided control over what type of information is used uh, and what type of information is sourced for what news is made for the mass public to hear through the mass media. But because of things like independent journalism and alternative media that, that does independent sourcing uh, and research, you sometimes get these organisations and I think this is the reason why these organisations started popping up and getting really popular maybe uh, out of nowhere and they're usually referred to as and called as fact checkers or fact checker organisations. And this has been kind of a recent epi phenomenon on the internet and online whereby a lot, if not most of them, are actually funded by these other big, powerful funding organisations that maybe want to eliminate the truth that has ended up seeping through the cracks via alternative media or from more independent, reliable sources of research that are not given the needed attention by the mass media, but also, of course, to occasionally, now and again, eliminate the completely outlandish misinformation that runs around in the media anyways.